As a recap, it is important to bear in mind that Nebuchadnezzar is the person or demonic entity called Hell, which follows behind the fourth pale green horseman, who is called Death. This is mentioned in the following Bible chapter. Revelation chapter 6 verses 7 to 8 Then when Jesus opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come and see. I looked and saw a pale green horse. The person sitting on it was called Death. And the person following behind him was called Hell. And both were given authority over a quarter of the earth to kill by the sword, by famine, by plague, and by the beasts of the earth. The Bible description on the previous page also appears to perfectly match the description of the Islamic Mahdi and Islamic Isa mentioned in the Quran and Hadiths. According to those books, when the Mahdi makes his appearance during the last days, Isa will follow behind him in terms of timing of arrival. Isa will also walk behind the Mahdi in prayer. It is also important for me to emphasize that Islam currently has authority over a quarter of the earth. These same two people also perfectly fit the description of the two characters mentioned in the Bible Book of Revelation, known as the first beast and the second beast. Therefore, it is a fact that there is a clear match between the following. The pale green horseman called Death, followed by the person called Hell, mentioned in the Bible. The Islamic Mahdi and Islamic Isa, mentioned in the Quran. The first beast and second beast, mentioned in the Bible. Okay, if we go back to this image, which was shown in part 5 of this video. As a reminder, it's a timeline chart with a starting point approximately 2,600 years ago and then stretches right up to the present day and beyond till the second coming of Jesus Christ. As you can see, it reveals the true identity of the four horsemen of the apocalypse mentioned in the Bible. Nebuchadnezzar is clearly portrayed here as being the first and the last in terms of arrival. On the far left, we can see that he is the first white horseman holding a bow, who makes his appearance around the start of the age. And over on the far right, there he is again, when he makes a return appearance around the end of this age. But this time, as the person or entity called Hell, who arrives just after the fourth pale green horseman. So as I was saying earlier, 
Nebuchadnezzar is clearly portrayed here as the first and the last, simply because he appears around the start of the age, followed by a reappearance around the end of the age. And on both occasions, he appears just before Jesus Christ. The first time that Nebuchadnezzar popped up was 550 years before the early life of Jesus Christ. The next time that we will see Nebuchadnezzar will be when he pops up again, just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Therefore, Nebuchadnezzar bears a striking similarity to Jesus Christ, who actually claimed to be the first and the last. This is confirmed in the following verses. Revelation chapter 1 verse 17 And when I saw the angel of Jesus, I fell at his feet like a dead man. Then he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Revelation chapter 2 verse 8 Write this letter to the angel of the church in Smyrna. This is the message from the one who is the first and the last, who was dead and is now alive. Revelation chapter 22 verses 12 to 13. The angel of Jesus said, Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Therefore, if Nebuchadnezzar is also being portrayed as the first and the last, then this is a clear mockery of Jesus Christ, whose divine title is the first and the last, as I have shown on the previous page. If Nebuchadnezzar is being portrayed as the first and the last, similar to Jesus Christ, then this clearly points to Nebuchadnezzar being a Jesus imposter. Therefore, as I have already shown, Nebuchadnezzar reborn will be a counterfeit Jesus who will go by the counterfeit name of Ezer. And if Nebuchadnezzar is a Jesus imposter, this would automatically qualify him as the forthcoming Antichrist, who is portrayed as a Jesus imposter in the following Bible verse. Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 12 And I saw a second beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon, and he exercised all the authority of the first beast who arrived before him and made the earth 
and all those which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Okay, so as you can see in verse 11, the second beast, Islamic Isa, is described as having horns like a lamb. And as we already know, the real Jesus Christ is also described as being a lamb with horns in Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. This tells us that the second beast, Islamic Isa, is going to be a Jesus imposter. Now, this would definitely appear to fit the description of Isa in the Quran. By the way, I will explain more later. Further evidence which supports the notion that Nebuchadnezzar is the biblical Antichrist can be found on the following pages. It is a fact that the Antichrist will deny the Father and Son. This is confirmed in 1 John chapter 2 verse 22. He who denies the Father and Son is the Antichrist. It is a fact that the Islamic Isa, who I have identified as Nebuchadnezzar reborn, will deny the Father and Son. This is confirmed in the following Quran verses. Quran Surah 1935 it is not befitting to the majesty of Allah that he should have a son. Quran Surah 5575 Christ the son of Mary was no more than a messenger. Quran Surah 4171 The Messiah Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah. So believe in Allah and his messengers. And say not three. It is better for you not to say this. Allah is only one God. Far is it removed from his transcendent majesty that he should have a son. Quran Surah 5116 And beware the day when Allah will ask, O Jesus, the son of Mary, did you say unto men the words, Worship me and my mother as gods beside Allah? And Jesus will reply with the words, Glory to you. Never could I say those words that I had no right to say. Quran Surah 9.30 The Christians call Christ the Son of Allah. That is a saying from their mouths. In this they imitate what the unbelievers of old say. May Allah's curse be on them, how they are deluded away from the truth. Quran Surah 4357 and 4359 When Jesus, the son of Mary, is held up as an example, he was no more than a servant. Okay, now going back to the Bible passages portraying Nebuchadnezzar as the first and the last. 
which mimics Jesus Christ, who is the first and the last. If we examine this statue that King Nebuchadnezzar saw in a prophetic dream, scholars today agree that it represents four world-ruling kingdoms, which will rule the earth in sequence, one after the other, until the second coming of Jesus Christ, who will conquer and destroy them when he returns. Please note, I provide a detailed identification and explanation for this statue in another video, which contains powerful and factual evidence to support my claims. Okay, starting from the top of the statue, the head of gold represents the first kingdom which was the Babylonian Empire, ruled by King Nebuchadnezzar II. The chest and arms of silver represents the Second Kingdom, which was the Medo-Persian Empire. The belly and thighs of bronze represents the Third Kingdom, which was the ancient Greek Empire. The legs of iron represent the Fourth Kingdom, which is described in the Book of Daniel as being diverse and made up of multiple parts. Basically, one leg represents the Roman Empire, while the other leg represents the Islamic State dynasty. Now, according to history, they both existed together around the same time and are both still in existence today in 2018. It is important to bear in mind that the Roman Empire is still active today, but in a fractured form. Basically, the Roman Empire rules one part of the world, while the Islamic State dynasty rules the other part of the world. Those two empires eventually morph into a world Islamic caliphate, which is represented by the feet and toes of iron and clay. This final world ruling kingdom will be ruled by King Nebuchadnezzar reborn during the tribulation period. I will provide evidence to support this claim later. Okay, so if Nebuchadnezzar is the ruler of the head of the statue, which is the first kingdom, followed by being the ruler of the feet of the statue, which is the last kingdom, as we can see here then this goes back to what I was saying earlier about Nebuchadnezzar being portrayed in parts of the Bible as the first and the last, which is a clear attempt to mimic Jesus Christ, who is the first and the last. This timeline chart shows the early lives and second comings of Nebuchadnezzar and Jesus Christ. On the left we can see the start of the current age. On the right we can see the end of the current age with the seven year tribulation. In addition to that, 
the reappearance of Nebuchadnezzar near the end of this age is another mockery of Jesus Christ simply because it will be a second coming of Nebuchadnezzar which will take place thousands of years after his natural death. This of course bears an uncanny similarity to the very much anticipated second coming of Jesus Christ which is expected by Christians to happen around the end of this age. So the return of Christ will take place thousands of years after his death during the crucifixion.